Now, let's have some more coffee. And get a little up close and personal with the radial distribution functions. And first, we're going to look at the 1s and 2s sublevels of hydrogen. And so these are also orbitals. And on the y-axis, we have total radial probability. And on the x-axis, we have radius. And these are going to be in picometers. Okay, so um, first off, let's talk about what does it mean to be total radial probability? What it means is if I look at any one radius for, uh, let's say this is 100 picometers. So 100 picometers for the 1s uh, sublevel, the 1s orbital, has a total radial probability of about 0.06. And so 0.06 might be thought of as somewhere approximately uh, 6%. And that radial probability, we are approximately 6% of a chance probability that you're gonna find the electron somewhere at this radius. And if we go to 52.9, you get up to a little over 8%. And so we're going closer to nucleus. So 52.9, you might be 8% likely to find it. And so total radial probability means all at all of the radiuses around the nucleus. So it's trying to take and make one graph out of uh, what's really a sphere. Okay, so then what I said before is, first off, this is 1s, and this is going to be 2s. And we see that 2s has a node. And it's not exactly where the orbital ends, because the orbital ends probably somewhere out here. And it's not exactly where the high point in probability is, but it's somewhere in there. And so think of this again as a way to create some as much separation as you can between the 1s and 2s electrons. So they're all negative, they're all in the same sort of volume, and they repel each other, called electron-electron repulsion. Okay, now this air, okay, and so first of all, in general, 1s, the electrons are closer to the nucleus. So, 1s is lower in energy than 2s. Okay. And then we have our node, and within the 2s orbital, there is this little tiny portion down here, and this portion is called the inner lobe of 2s. And the inner lobe of 2s is closer to the nucleus than uh, most of the 1s orbital. Inner lobe of 2s closer to the nucleus than most of the 1s uh, orbital. And what that's going to mean, if you're closer to the nucleus, that means that you're more attracted to the nucleus. And another way of looking at it is, since these electrons, the 1s electrons, are between the most of the 2s, the rest of it anyway, so uh, these are going to be less attracted to the nucleus and also repelled by the 1s electrons. This area right here 
pretty strongly attracted to the nucleus in the inner lobe. Okay. Um, and let's see. And we're starting and we're definitely seeing some wave-like features here. Now let's go on to the next one. Here is there are the 2S and 2Ps. And again, the way that you know the 2S is it has this inner lobe. And so the 2S is the one with the solid line. And the 2P is the one that uh, does not have <laughs> the inner lobe. Um, so I guess that's the best way to say it. And remember the 2P, the 2P has its own lobe. And it's a planar node. So 2P has a node and 2S has a node. And the 2S node is a spherical node. It's still a surface. And the 2P node is a planar node, which is also a surface. Anyway, so we uh, you are unlikely to get any questions about nodes except for this question. As you go from N1 equals 1 to N equals 2 to N equals 3, what happens to the number of nodes? The number of nodes increases. What happens is you go from S to P to D to F, the number of nodes increases as well. The complexity of the shapes increases. And I guess the one other question is, if I presented you with this graph and said, where is the node in 2S? You would have to say where the probability, and this time it's the radial probability, where the probability equals zero. So node, and I think I even wrote this on one of them, pro, node probability equals zero. Okay? All right. So now let's look at these two. And what's going to become important uh, for these two is that they have different distributions. Oh, so this was 2P. And we'll call it 2PX, um, although it could be any of the 2Ps. So they have different distributions of their probability. Okay. And what is not necessarily apparent, but let's try and motivate it uh, seeing it. So this portion of the 2S is closer to the nucleus than the 2P. However, 2P has a big portion that is closer than the rest of the 2S. And so while it may or may not be apparent, let's see, one, they have different distributions. Two, if you average 2S and 2P, they are the same average distance. from the nucleus. Okay, uh, for 2s and 2p orbitals. Okay. And so what we will then use this for, and this is one of the questions on the homework, so uh, for one electron systems, we will see that 2s and 2p orbitals have the same energy. Two s and 2p orbitals have the same energy and these two, let's say this, we will have you know that they do have the same energy only for one electron systems. And it is because they have the same average distance from the nucleus. Okay. And um, 
That's why when you use the equation E equals minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18, blah, 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 it is for N equals 2, that is for one electron systems, and it could be 2S or 2P because they have the same amount of energy. There is nothing about sublevels in that equation. All right. Finally, let's talk about all three of them together. And this picture, the point of it is to explain why 2s is lower in energy for multi-electron systems. So for uh, multi-electron systems, which is all atoms, two S is lower in energy than two P. Okay. And so that's where we're going with this next part of this discussion. And uh, uh, so this is total probability, total radial probability. And this is radius in picometers, okay? And I guess the one thing I forgot to point out before was, remember I said that 2s, 2s and 2p uh, fit within the same sphere. You can see they're ending at approximately the same place. So anyway, that's a side note there. Now, now we have multi-electron systems, and the first electrons go into 1s. And then more electrons go into 2s and 2p. And it turns out that 2s is lower energy than 2p because of the inner lobe. So this inner lobe of 2s is attracted more strongly to the nucleus because it is closer than the 2p. So, and the way we typically put that is the 2p orbital electrons are shielded from the nucleus by uh, more, so let's write this, by the 1s electrons, more than the 2s electrons. And that's because the 2p, the almost all of it is, or let's say this, more of it is farther outside of 1s. That's what the shielding is. So it's like the nucleus is over here. The 2p electrons, on average, the same distance from the nucleus, but because they are not, they don't have this inner lobe, they are shielded more by the 1s electrons. So two things. First, 2s is lower in energy than 2p. Second, that is because the 2p orbital electrons are shielded from the nucleus by the 1s electrons more than the 2s electrons are. Always happy to answer any questions you have about this, but that's the take-home message from this plot.